Welcome back. It's raining again as I speak. It's crazy. The entire country is underwater and I've got some friends over in Germany right now on vacation and they're telling me it's snowing over there. I don't think that's normal for this time of year but all right not much going on um, in the shop puttering around machine maintenance cleaning up chips from everything but new sticker active adam i was thrilled to get it he sent in quite a few of them different ones here <laughs> dude and that so thrilled this was uh you guys do back in march <laughs> But, okay, it's up there. How many? One, two. I'm probably I'm the only one with the little machine shop sticker, too, that was sent up there. So, um, last video, I showed Tap Magic. I did get a chance to try it uh, while tapping, and wow, completely different. Uh, I did a number of different holes with it, um, all small stuff, like uh, eight, not, yeah, four millimeters, 832s. It's the first time I've ever, ever had the tap go all the way in, and the chips that came off of it were completely different. I've never been able to go all the way through uh, tapping a hole. I've always had to go in back it up a little break the chip go a little further back it up then take the tap out clear all the chips off the tap go back at it on all of these holes i expected to have to take the tap out i didn't it just went all the way through and i said thought now let me try it on uh while drilling so hopefully i can overlay a picture this is definitely what you're seeing is one of the best holes or best finishes I have ever seen. And this stuff is, I swear, water is more viscous than this stuff. It just flows, so it's very hard to kind of limit the quantity that um, you're putting in a hole or what you're on the tap. It also has a very funky smell, and when it gets on your hands, soap does not get rid of it. That smell stays there for a day or two. <laughs> All right, so what else have I got for you guys? Um, uh, 3018, I got an incredible uh, Gerbil user manual for the 3018. It's on the website. Feel free to download it if you want. Um, but first of all, um, making the uh, 5C collet block here. I'll take you over to the 3018 CNC and show you some of what I've been playing with and doing to make this. I'm not happy with it because they tilt and they stay tilted <laughs> and they bang against one another when you close the drawer. So I want to do something else uh, other than this. I was also thinking about buying the entire metric set, which would give me, I think it's like, this is 16. I now have like 43 or something like that. I've, I've got no space for it and I'd love to get the set. So I'll give you the 3018 and then the mill. I'm finally finished rebuilding mill number one. I'll show you a picture of it at the end, but I'll share what I went through, um, a little bit of what I went through rebuilding it. So hope you guys like, see you next Friday. First up, yes, I did manage to mill right into the table here because like an idiot, I didn't tighten up the collet nut all the way. So while making a test run for the 5C collet holder, I wanted to uh, get the diameter correct on each hole. And the end mill worked its way down and right into the table. As far as the wiring, the original control board had pairs of connectors. In other words, for the Y axis, there was a pair, uh, there was a connector pair of two pins for the front switch, and there was another two pins for the rear switch. Same way with the X and the Y. The new board only has one pair. So if you wanted to have 
two limit switches at the ends for each axis you'd have to parallel them and I started thinking about it going you never really home the machine at all um, because like for instance the woods here I'm going to do the 5C block you position the end mill right on the corner where you're going to start your work everything I've done it's always been positioning on the corner of the work because that's where FreeCAD starts it. So I wound up taking all the limit switches off except for the Z, the top Z, because inevitably I have run the head right up into an end stop. So I've got just the Z on there, which is fine. Um, so, and as far as air, you can see I made this little block here quarter inch tubing goes on it and when I was making the, the 5C block thing it worked beautifully I had a fan over here it was blowing all of the junk out of the garage and this kept the hole clear so I got a gorgeous finish everything was perfect so I'll take you over now and well the first thing was I showed in a video a while ago that pump, air pump that I made for the mill to get rid of chips and to cool out the, cool the end mill. I stole that pump, put it on here and had it running to do that block was eight hours worth of uh, milling. And after quite a few hours, all of a sudden that pump, the motor overheated and just died. So I'm going to... I'll take you over to the bench and show you proof of concept trying to make another air pump out of that unit salvaging what I could and then I'll show you the final product. Just trying to get proof of concept here since the other motor burnt up this guy is staying ice cold so I don't know why they used that particular motor on it, it was getting hot and I'm running it at um, almost 11 volts so I can control this I was thinking and there's a lot of air coming out of this thing too tremendous so I can slow it down more yeah that's probably where it was before I'm at 10 volts so yeah it screwed the plate up <laughs> that's why I got a c-clamp on there but this guy is just cranking away well there's the guy complete with a pulse width modulator bought this guy a long time ago it was going to be the uh, variable speed for a power feed for the x-axis on the mill but the signal was pretty bad so I can turn it on I've got variable speed and it's putting out all kinds of air I can just slow it down here it's cranking pretty slow look at that so, and I can go way up. I need to put a voltmeter on here to make sure I don't go past 12 volts. But yeah, it's putting out a lot of air here. <laughs> so, cool. Uh, I'm probably just going to put some rubber feet on it. It's nice and quiet. Motor stays icy cold. And they do have a bearing hidden down in there behind that aluminum piece that's going that way the motor doesn't go back and forth with slop so I'm done with this project oh I don't know about you guys but boy <laughs> the first mill thought it had it together but it kept binding you know you crank the handle and you could feel uh, friction on it so I'm not gonna quit until this thing is perfect now I don't know why both mills the x-axis fine it's probably because, you know, it's one piece and they flip it over and then they machine the grooves and this intermediate piece, so small that they can make it real easy and straight. But this guy kept binding when I put it to the front. So you can see it's real easy right now. But what I want to share is you don't know where it's binding, what's crooked. I put gauge pins here and measured it in the middle and the back. Everything seemed fine. Um, 
So the trick is, you can see it down here, die cam. So on the front, I put die cam on both sides. You just pull it until it starts binding, push it back, and you can see where it's scraping and hitting. Turns out it's this surface. Um, this was high, and so I had lapped and sanded and everything to get it down. And then this side was really high, so I don't understand in the milling process because both this mill and the second mill, the same thing. Um, so I'm about to see where it's binding back here right now. And let's just go back. Hey, there was the bind. It's sticking right there. What is it scraping? It's already sanded some of this. So you can see there's scraping here. This side, meh. Not really anything in the dovetail or on the surface. It's all this side. It's all just this surface right here. So that has to be slowly taken down. Uh, wow, it really just jams right there. <clears throat> you can see the whole mill's moving. That's where it's scraping. So evidently this bottom surface here on this middle piece is riding on this surface uh, for rigidity. I would have thought maybe it's just, no, you can't throw it. You can't do just the dovetails. You gotta have something to hold it up. So for some reason, they just couldn't machine this right. Well, I cannot tell you what, as I walk around the bench here, what an ordeal this rebuild has been. Royal pain. Where can I put this microphone piece? Because I'm going to be moving. I guess I'll just set it there for now. Uh, all right, first was the entire column head goes on one bench. Start working on this guy. Um, clean him all up and stuff. Um, uh, X axis comes off. This guy comes off, all cleaned up, everything shined up, sanded. Then I start working on the y-axis, big pain. Um, turns out putting a test indicator down on the actual bottom piece here, this floor here is doing this number at the extremes because I could not go all the way back and all the way forward. It would just jam up. So both sides were bowed that way. The actual indicator on the where the gib actually hits was perfect on both sides a lot of sanding and lapping i actually put this piece on the granite surface and lapped it so i could make sure it was flat and it wasn't you could see all kinds of spots where the sandpaper was hitting so i finally got it all nice and easy and working well um, this guy goes back on and he works perfect, so nothing to do. Um, had a big, big problem with the gib moving because you go this way and the gib stayed put, you come this way and the gib shifted and jammed itself in. So one direction was real easy, the other direction was difficult. <laughs> Brand new gib in there, took a, a ball in mill made a nice little pocket in it, made the gib screw itself rounded on the tip, it seated in there. Problem was the gib screw itself was doing this number because the threads are real sloppy. So both nuts back and front are locked down. It's also non-permanent Loctite in there. Now it finally is staying put. That was probably three, four days worth of work to just get the y-axis working nicely. Um, the head on the other bench, everything came off. Column completely sanded, cleaned. It looks gorgeous again like new. The extended rack went in there. It showed you guys making the piston thing. The two 20-pounders that were in there were, st again, too much force so I guess this heads about 20 pounds because I had ordered from Amazon the same ones I have on the other mill 
So there's two 10 pounders in there and it works beautifully. So I got that done, uh, tops all done. Everything's back up here. You can see the touchpad, um, 3D printed, couple of nice clips to hold everything, Velcroed in place. I've only got Z and uh, Y done so far. Um, on the head, the only way you're going to get these Gibbs uh, screws and stuff adjusted is when it's on the bench on its back and you can easily feel the friction as you move it and so on. So those have never been adjusted correctly before because like I said it was a new mill or didn't know anything to take it apart. Dust everywhere. So I got it all together. I'm happy with everything so far. Um, already I mean, the first one was to get the Y scale in there, which is always a pain. Took me hours and hours to get it squared up. I had to test indicate the outside face to make sure it wasn't bowing. Uh, wound up because this base piece is doing this number. It comes in at the back. A screw through there, the original mounts. You can see I still use the black mounts. Um, through the black mount washer and two small hard o-rings on there so as I dial indicated it I could compress the o-rings until I had zero movement this way then test indicate the top of it so I can make sure I'm straight that axis that took hours and hours and hours I was getting really tired of messing with it Finally got it perfect because um, I guess I'm going to uh, show, yeah, I'm set up for that axis right now. So if I'm zeroed out, uh, I'm using a magnifying glass here too. Uh, I'm not on zero anymore, huh, for some reason. All right, right on zero. Uh, y axis, er, come on. All right, zero him out, zero. So if I move 50 thousandths, and I come up on it, boom, 50 thou. There's 50, 100 thou. Come back up here, there, whoop, I went over a little bit. It's throwing 100, I'm maybe a tenth over. Come back to zero, and there. So I'm thrilled to death with that. I've got the Y working. I just finished testing the Z, it's working fine. Um, and the Z has been a problem on this mill from day one. I did open up, was it the Z? One of these guys, I, oh, it was the X axis. It's not on there yet. I'm making the actual mounts. My precision aluminum mounts are on the Z. They'll be also on the X, and then I'll use the stock on the Y. But I opened up the X axis actual scale, the black box. Tons of um, aluminum chips were in it. I hit it with the dust off or whatever, boom, chips flew out of it. Um, X was the one that was blinking, so I'll be curious when I get it back together if it's still going to be blinking. Um, I don't know how the chips got in there. It's completely sealed. So they had to sneak in somehow through the actual scale, the bar itself. So I'm really thrilled. Uh, I wish I would have documented how long the cable was when I did the other mill. So I had to go at it a few times and what else can I say? I'm thrilled with it. Gibbs are done. That's always a pain. Oh, the nut here. You really got to play with this. I brought the whole thing all the way out until the nut inside hit the face here then you start tightening this up and you got to shift it this way and up and down and tilt if you want zero it's almost got zero uh, run out in it or play because you can tilt it this way in the nut and it starts binding too much binds too much and it's rough not enough and you'll have backlash in it so that was a lot of hours playing with that to finally get it super nice and smooth. 
How much do I have in it? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot. Wow. Uh, five thou or so. Backlash in it. Oops, it's moving. So if I go this way, and they go one thou, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, about eight thou. But I don't care about that. You can't move it. And um, also grabbing everything, there's no rocking or playing it. So getting there, all I need to do is the X axis, and then I should be back online again. All right, the guy is up and running. The tack is on there, and I'm running off a wall transformer. So this board, uh, previous videos I was showing just too much noise. Um, this is the Sane Smart Hall Effect um, board, beautiful board. It's, uh, I'll put a link in the description to it. It's on Amazon, it's really dirt cheap, so. Um, already connected up blue DRO touch DRO I don't know whether I've mentioned it before but uh, the user manual on the front cover the first page you can go to blue DRO and you'll buy the box and the touch DRO inside I think it's hundred and twenty five dollars or you can go to Yuri's toys and you can buy just the board alone the touch DRO I think it was seventy dollars, something like that. So, um, zero everybody out. This guy is extremely accurate. All the oh, I didn't swap the axes yet. Oh no, I am doing the Y axis. Duh. Okay, I've tested and tested it over and over again. Extremely accurate. The RPM. I'm just using one magnet. You can see. Um, I had made this a long time ago because I got tired of the cover moving around. So I just pulled the cover off of it. It's now just there's a little lip where it goes down into this plastic cover. One magnet. I did try two and it wasn't too sick. It jumped around. The RPM was off a little bit. Not much. So one magnet. Um, the pot allows you to get rid of the noise, which is great. So if you've got some very low level spikes in there, which happens because of the noise that the mill makes, um, then you can adjust it to just completely get rid of that. So here's the, here it is. And eventually I'm just going to drill a hole in the top, run the wires through it and cover the whole thing up. I did use the laser um, RPM guy and it's spot on it's great so you can see i've got full rpm capability here speed it up and it's really nice so i'm loving this entire setup and i'll be putting one of these boards on the other mill so i'll have attack also on that mill it's, it's like fun to play with let me tell you slightly higher <laughs> is it a thousand wow i hit a thousand on the money huh 17 right so um i mean this is great because i'm running off the wall and this guy is just taking care of the noise so just kind of an update for you guys